Hi, welcome back. I have another um, drum tutorial for you today. This time I'm going to be showing you how to play a song I wrote for one of my uh, solo projects, The Crimson Rod. This song's called Fixated. It's off the album Bacon Charcoal Snowflakes from an earlier last year. But anyways, I'm going to link to the song at the end of the video. Uh, so if it seems like a really long video length, not link to put it in the video. If it seems like a long video link, don't run away now, because that's probably part of it. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to teach you that. It's I'm really just going to teach you the verse, chorus, and bridge. They have uh, different kind of ideas behind how they were written, uh, and they're just simple tricks that you can use to apply uh, in your math rock stuff, or any odd time signature drumming, you know, to give you some ideas of what you're doing. A terrible introduction, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing for the verse, um, let's start, you know, kind of the 3-4 the sort of typical feel, or a lot of people do a 6-8, but the, the bass drum, the pedals, I should have checked this for the pedals won't out, okay, but like... The, you know, just kind of bluesy, jammy thing. A lot of people do it as 6-8, or you could do it as a 3-4, uh, faster 3-4 with kicks on the downbeats, kicks and snares alternating on downbeats. Um, we're kind of taking that idea of playing on the downbeat and letting uh, the meter kind of dictate the ride pattern. So what we have here is it's a 5-8 pattern. We've got... One, two, three, four, five, hitting on the one and the three, four. Uh, pretty standard five, eight pattern. And we're just doing downbeats, kicks, snares. So. Like, that kind of thing. And it's three measures of that. And then for the fourth measure, we have a bar of three, four that goes. Right? Just kind of decorating the two and then the end of the three a little bit. Bring a little more feel, and slowly, all together, that sounds like. Right? I'm kind of swingy there. You want to preserve that five feel, you know, you don't want to compress it into swung eighths. So that's, that. that's pretty simple, right, for the verse. And you can do that, um, you know, you can apply that to really taking any meter, any anything, and just emphasizing those downbeats and give it a cool kind of uh, swing-ish thing going on. Okay. So moving on, we try to move pretty quickly. Uh, we have the chorus, which is based around a three against four polyrhythm, so. Right? So you can hear better. I don't know which is easier to tell from the camera, but yeah. Three against four polyrhythm. And we're going to ex do alternating kicks and snares for the three, which you'll notice won't resolve because three is not enough. So we're actually going to extend it to an eight against six uh, polyrhythm. So we have that six four kind of thing. That And we're just going to layer in the hi-hat over that with the uh, dotted eighth note pulse to make it the polyrhythm. So that's... All right, a little bit slower maybe. Okay. And that's a little, that's cool, that's cool. It's got a cool vibe already, but it's a little dull. So we're gonna add, um, we're gonna turn the third bass drum kick into two eighth notes. So it, Now it's right, and the second measure uh, we're actually going to clip to an 11 8. And that last snare hat, we're going to has two uh, 16 note hits on the rim there, so that'll be. Sounds better. 
better with without the mesh heads and stuff because these plates are really loud relative to this. But normally they're they're lower. I could play softer, but whatever. Okay, <laughs> so that's that. It's a cool idea. Um, just playing around with you know kind of basic backbeat grooves and layering that polyrhythmic sort of thing in there. You can create some really cool stuff. Uh, the last song off the same album, um, Undrown, has this five against four, so you got pattern that comes up a lot. You know, so that's, that's pretty cool. It's got a lot of tension to it. Um, you can also do stuff like five against three. Right? And, uh, Instead of, well, no, I guess it'd be the same thing there of kind of doubling it to alternate these effectively. Would be. You know, it gives you kind of a weird lumbering, pushy, pulley thing. A lot of really cool tricks. Really, any polyrhythm you can play, you can orchestrate differently. You know, you don't have to do just... You know, you could do different grouping, like doing, doing dads and, you know, just whatever. Just whatever you come up with. As long as you can coordinate your limbs, you can do a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff, really, just playing with basic uh, polyrhythms and not adding any of the notes, just letting the polyrhythm dictate the music. So that's the chorus. Um, and I should note, actually, when you hear... I'm very loose with tempo, so when you actually hear the song, it's not... If you're trying to count along... It's not going to sound like 6-4 relative to the verse that just happened. It, this kind of a tempo uh, change is nothing precise. It just slows down. Um, but now you know. When you hear that, you're like, whoa, that's not 6-4. That's, that's fucked up. Okay, so, so that's that. Uh, the last thing is playing around with linear stuff. If you don't know what uh, linear drumming, it's just where no two notes overlap basically. <laughs> that, but hopefully better. And um, this is, you know, uh, popular in a lot of funk and gospel drumming and stuff. So you can do some cool stuff, cool stuff with it. Here we're just going to do a simple 5-8 uh, pattern again. We have K. Just like that. All right? And we'll go to the fast one. We're going to do three bars of that. And then the fourth bar is going to be a seven that goes. Right? Putting it together a little slow. And faster. for this video but those are those are it's a pretty short video hopefully and then I'll, I'll put the song in after this so you can hear it in kind of a a mathy noise rock uh, context I'll put the instrumental version so you see don't have to hear me sing but um so that's that three simple techniques uh, to give you more ideas of what you can do with odd time signatures and stuff just more stuff with the downbeat we talked about this uh, in the last video with the additive um, section where you're just stringing rhythmic cells along. It's the same basic thing, so if you're doing it with entire uh, meters and you can ornament things within the meter, other than that. So, you've got that, you've got the polyrhythms and just really just playing the polyrhythm and moving it around the kit and making it making it groove, but not adding too much to the actual polyrhythm. And then you've got the linear stuff where you just do linear stuff. So, <laughs> so hopefully that's been helpful. Uh, hopefully you like this song. I'll put a link in the description to the album itself where you can get it for free. Uh, it's full of wonky, noisy, mathy stuff. If you like that kind of thing, I love that kind of thing. So, And as usual, if uh, you have music like this or if this gives you any ideas to write music, please let me know. Put it in the comments or whatever. So that's really it. Um, thanks for watching.